Well, the third largest railroad union rejected a deal from employers renewing the possibility of a nationwide strike that could hurt the U.S. economy. That's right. The railroads and unions reached a tentative deal last month to avoid a walkout. And a lot of people were breathing a big sigh of relief. But all 12 unions representing 115,000 workers must ratify the contract by the middle of next month. Both sides will now return to the bargaining table. So let's bring in Richard Edelman now. He's a labor attorney for the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees, the union that has rejected this proposed deal. Richard, welcome. Great to have you with us. So explain to us where the disconnect is here between the BWED and the rail companies, because we know that the unions did get a lot of what they were asking for. What does the union still want that employers are not willing to give? Well, look, I think that what you see is a culmination of trends and events over nearly two decades. Um, the railroads have been very, very, very profitable since 2004, but the employees' wage increases have been comparatively minuscule. And uh, as they've taken on increased costs for the health and welfare benefits. And in 2016, the railroads adopted uh, a new, very rigid cost cutting business model that. Um, at the behest of activists, so-called activist investors, and they cut the workforce by 30%. And uh, then came the pandemic and rail workers were required to work through. Uh, BMW members, many of them had to travel long distances, work in close quarters uh, with coworkers while managers and administrative people got to stay home. Uh, the workforce reductions continued even as the pandemic went on, even as traffic came back, the workforce reductions continued. And the railroad profits actually increased um, as the workforce remained stagnant. And in the bargaining, the railroads insisted that their extreme profits were irrelevant to employee compensation and benefits. And, and the railroads resisted union proposals for paid sick leave. The railroads seemed to recognize a need for it at the start of the pandemic. They unilaterally gave paid sick leave to employees who were infected or exposed to COVID. Uh, but they resisted, they would not agree to provide paid sick leave as part of uh, an agreement. And all the while, the profits parade continued. And all of that's really led to where we are now. And the railroad workers feel disrespected and abused. And during the bargaining, you know, we said that the railroads had seen a 1,000% increase in thank yous for your service and a 0% wage increase offer. And in that context, the denial of uh, paid sick leave uh, hits particularly hard. And I think all of that came together and resulted in the, uh, re re the rejection of the tentative agreement. So Richard, you really sort of painted a good picture. We get it, a 30% reduction in railroad employees, but the work is still there. So you have fewer yeah. people doing the same amount of work. As I understand it, sick leave was definitely one of the factors, but it was also this really sort of strict attendance policy that made it very difficult for workers to balance their personal life and their work. And that seemed to me to be sort of at the top of the agenda. So when the president came out and said, this is a win for railroad employees, I thought that that would have been a big component of this new tentative deal. Was your union present during the negotiations with the labor department? And, you know, did that come up? So the BMWED was not part of those negotiations mm. at the Department of Labor. Um, and the issue that you've raised is a very significant issue for engineers and conductors who have unscheduled work. In other words, they're almost always on call. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so as a result, they can't uh, even get time to, to go to a doctor or go to a dentist or mm -hmm. deal with some you know scheduled surgery. So, so that's a significant issue for them. That was what, what, one of the things that was addressed that evening, uh, but that was not, BMWED was not part of that. Okay. So Richard, many employers afford their employees what you are asking for, right? It doesn't sound like, you know, these are outrageous uh, demands. Has there been any indication that management is willing to sit back down at the table with you on some of these issues? They, they said they will meet with us again, mm -hmm. but up till now, their position has been adamant that they are not gonna provide paid sick leave, which as you note, is something that employers all around the country provide. I would also note that the railroads 
um, when th there was an executive order on a vaccine mandate, said they were federal contractors, therefore subject to that mandate, but they're not. Uh, th there's also an executive order for employers uh, who are federal contractors to provide paid sick leave and the railroads uh, say they're, they're not subject to that and they don't wanna provide it. And really this, I think at this point is sort of a basic human need that people need to be able, and it's good for the railroads. You don't want sick people coming to work and infecting their coworkers. Right. It's not right. just for the benefit of the individual involved. And the railroads seem, again, recognize that during the beginning of the pandemic, but they won't provide it on a permanent basis. So the union you represent is one of 12 though. Mm -hmm. I presume the other 11 are on board with this deal. And if so, and I know you guys are supportive of each other and representative, of each other, what what are the chances that we could see a strike here? So uh, several of the other unions, including the engineers and conductors that I, I mentioned, are still uh, involved in the ratification process mm. and they're still voting and we won't know what their members uh, say in the end uh, for a little while. Um, but rail union workers, they stick together. If a un rail workers honor picket lines. If one of the union strikes, everybody will honor the picket line. There's also the potential that the railroads would lock out. They were the last ones to cause a national um, disruption in 1992. They locked out uh, uh, railroad workers. Um, so there is the potential. Again, we want to sit down and try and come to terms, and we hope we will, but that is part of the Railway Labor Act process in the end the possibility of self-help by either the union or management or and the pressure that is brought to bear by that possibility of self-help is part of the process and again we hope we don't have to be there but it has the, there is that potential and i would emphasize that you know unions are democratic institutions their members have the ultimate say union leadership will negotiate tentative agreements we were presented with a presidential emergency board report the union did what it could to try and improve it and put it in front of the membership. And they are the ones who had the ultimate say Richard, and will ultimately have the ultimate say. Richard, is the, is the White House still involved at all? And is there anything that you think the federal government can do to ensure that railroad workers are, are satisfied? I think um, the White House is certainly, as my understanding, is offered to help however they can. We appreciated the help of the administration at various points along uh, the way. And uh, I think, you know, railroads could be pressured to share with their employees and treat their employees with respect mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and not be as disdainful as they have been both uh, in bargaining and at the presidential emergency board proceedings. Well, one thing um, we know again, for sure the president is definitely watching this closely. We know he's a fan of the he's railroads, a big right? Fan, he's a fan yeah. of, of, of this form of transportation. Mm -hmm. So whether or not he weighs in, we know he's watching closely. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Edelman, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you for having me on. You know, not just that, Tanya, but we are bucking up against the midterm elections. We know Absolute. the impact that a rail strike will have on the economy. Absolutely. He does not want this headache. Two big issues for the president, unions, railroads, transportation, economy. I mean, a lot of big yep. issues here.